Hello and good morning and a very, very warm welcome to you to um, this uh, morning worship at St Martin's Church. Um, a particular welcome to those joining us from Dunstan and Coppen Hall today. It's wonderful to have you with us. And um, we'll be using our morning worship at home booklet as we have been doing for the past few weeks. Um, and we begin our service as normal by greeting each other in the name of Jesus. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. Our video is a little different today. Our music is in a separate video which you can find on our YouTube channel. Um, so either you can um, pause this video and uh, go to that video and have the music throughout um, or you can watch this video um, in one go and then go to the uh, music video and have a big worship session. Um, so if you'd like to pause now and go and uh, worship together using our first song, please do. As we step into the light and presence of Christ, let's lift to him all that's on our minds, in our hearts, all those ways that we've strayed from the path of his kingdom, Let's come back to him now, knowing that he loves us, forgives us and fills us with his mercy and his grace. Christ, the light of the world, has come to dispel the darkness of our hearts. In his light, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins, praying together. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore to us the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We praise our God together now. Let everything be said and done in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God through Jesus Christ. Sing psalms, hymns and sacred songs. Let us sing to God with thankful hearts. Open our lips, Lord and we shall praise your name. If you'd like to, please do go and uh, listen and sing along with the second worship song. Our first reading this week is taken from the letter of Paul to the Romans, Romans chapter 14, verses one to 12. Romans chapter 14, beginning to read at verse one. Accept him whose faith is weak, without passing judgment on disputable matters. One man's faith allows him to eat everything, but another man whose faith is weak eats only vegetables. The man who eats everything must not look down on him who does not, and the man who does not eat everything must not condemn the man who does, for God has accepted him. Who are you to judge someone else's servant? To his own master he stands or falls, and he will stand, for the Lord is able to make him stand. One man considers one day more sacred than another, another man considers every day alike. Each one should be fully convinced in his own mind. He who regards one day as special does so to the Lord. He who eats meat eats to the Lord, for he gives thanks to God. And he who abstains does so to the Lord and gives thanks to God. For none of, none of us lives to himself alone, and none of us dies to himself alone. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. For this very reason, Christ died and return to life so that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. You then, why do you judge your brother? Or why do you look down on your brother? For we will all stand before God's judgment seat. It is written, 
As surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow before me, every tongue will confess to God. So then, each of us will give an account of himself to God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We turn now to our Gospel reading, to Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 to 35. Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 to 25. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother when he sins against me? Up to seven times. Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. Therefore the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him ten thousand talents was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. The servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, cancelled the debt and let him go. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, Be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I cancelled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had, had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In, a in anger, his master turned him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother from your heart. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. What does it really mean to forgive someone? We often learn about it as a young child, being taught to say, I'm sorry, and then it's okay, I forgive you, when something happens that hurts another person. But as we get older and life gets more complicated, we discover that it is far more to forgiveness than just childish grievances. The truth is that life sometimes hurts, not just in general, but in specific, tangible ways that causes real harm emotionally, mentally and even physically. And when we are hurt or when someone we love is injured, forgiveness can often be the furthest thing from our minds. Perhaps because we don't quite know what forgiveness really looks like or how exactly we are to go about it. Our reading in Matthew today is all about forgiveness. Peter is asking Jesus what forgiveness is. His suggestion of, do I forgive somebody seven times, is no accident because seven times is the biblical shorthand for what is complete or perfect. Jesus' reply to him, though, is absolutely astronomical. Seventy times seven. He doesn't mean 490, quick maths there but rather that it is beyond perfection. Forgiveness requires something from us that's even beyond perfection. The goal is the perfection of perfection, infinity times infinity. So no wonder it is such a hard thing for us to do. But there is hope in this response from Jesus. In fact, he indicates that forgiveness is not so much a to-do list, but in fact about our discipleship. To put it another way, forgiveness is a way of life. One of my favourite Christian um, authors and teachers is Corrie Ten Boom. I'm sure you've come across her. And she talks um, beautifully about forgiveness. 
she talks specifically about how she was able to forgive a man who asked for her forgiveness after he had spent time as a guard in the concentration camp where her and her sister were kept. And at first she is not able to forgive this man. And then she reflects on how Christ has forgiven her and she finds a way to forgive him. And then she talks, interestingly, about how forgiveness is in fact an expectation of those who follow Christ. It's an expectation of what it means to be a disciple of Christ. Do read um, Corrie Ten Boom's book if you've, if you've not come across her before. Matthew 18 is often known as the parable of the unforgiving or the unmerciful servant and it is a parable of extremes just like um, Jesus' extreme response to Peter's question. That concept of 10,000 talents was mind-blowingly big. It's astronomical that figure. Both 10,000 and talent were words at the, at the time of writing that were the biggest unit that they could imagine. It would be like us saying a million, billion, kajillion or some other inconceivable number. The amount that that servant owed was just absolutely absurd. And the concept of a master forgiving that amount of debt is absolutely absurd. So what we see there in that illustration is that God's measure of grace is absolutely absurd. It is a 70 times seven kind of forgiveness of debt. And in contrast, of course, is the response of the servant to the one who owes him a debt, comparatively tiny. It's a, a number that you could wrap your head around. It's, it's one day's wages. It's comparatively small. And while we might expect a repeat of the grace that was shown to him, instead what he does is the exact opposite. And he's told that that is not acceptable. He's told that when you are given mercy and grace and forgiveness, you are expected, it is necessary to show the same. This fits with the understanding of the pattern that Jesus gave to Peter, a repeated ongoing forgiveness, 70 times seven, might lead to an embodiment of it, even in the most trying of circumstances. In order to embody this radical way of living, it's good to name exactly what forgiveness is. Forgiveness on its most basic level is a letting go. It's a choice. It doesn't depend on the person that we're forgiving. It doesn't depend on their remorse or even their seeking it. It's a choice that we make. It's psychological and it's social because it happens within ourselves and also it happens to the people around us. Forgiveness is liberating. It frees both the person giving it and the person who can receive it. Forgiveness affects us at a very deep level. Ultimately, it's good for us. It's the good thing for us to do. Even so, it's not often the most attractive thing for us. It's not often the most natural thing for us to offer. Our nature seems to get stuck in our anger and the need for revenge to settle scores. We breed resentment in ourselves and we can relive the anger and the pain over and over again. Forgiveness calls for a release of those things that bind us, a letting go of those things that we hold on to. This is what makes it such a massive concept. When we let go of that resentment and that anger and relinquish the grudges that we have, we open up a space, space to experience all of the other emotions present in our lives, space to experience grief if we need to grieve, joy and hope in the promise that tomorrow will be better, and time to work through all the other things that prevent us from living the lives that God intends us to live. Most of all, Forgiveness offers us the space to experience God's grace and love more fully. I think that Jesus was hoping 
that forgiveness and mercy will be in every conversation and every path that Peter followed. That in fact his, the lives of his disciples would be marked by forgiveness. Forgiveness can open up the door to reconciliation but that is not necessarily the outcome because reconciliation requires a deep willingness to trust. Forgiveness can help us to be reconciled to people but it's not necessarily what it's all about and indeed it's not definitely not about staying in a situation where you're not safe or um, you're being abused in one form or another. Forgiveness calls attention to our humanness at its most human. It reduces us to our most base instincts and challenges us with the hard work of responding in the way of Christ, to forgive, to offer mercy, to seek reconciliation. Let's do that this week, one opportunity at, at a time, then seven, then 70 times seven. May we, little by little, move more and more into the ways of God's mercy. Amen. We say together now the words of our faith to encourage each other that although we are at a distance today, that we are united by what we believe, we are united by the Spirit of Christ resting in us. We say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's pray together now. Heavenly Father, as we seek to forgive, remind us that we have been forgiven by you abundantly, extravagantly. Help us to remember the mercy and grace that you have shown us and help us to seek not just seven, but 70 times, seven times to forgive the people around us. May forgiveness come, become part of our discipleship. May our path with you be marked by forgiveness, by your grace and your mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, this morning we lift to you um, all those who have uh, had to flee their homes, um, who have nowhere to live, or no countries to live in. Lord, we pray particularly for the migrant camp on Lesbos and all those who have been affected um, so deeply by the fires there. Lord, for people who already had so little, to have it all taken away from them must just be grief upon grief. So Lord, we ask that you will pour upon them today an absolute abundance of, of your love and your peace and your presence protect them Lord particularly the most vulnerable and help those who are working with them Lord bless them very deeply in that work Lord in your mercy hear our prayer Father God we continue to pray for the Covid crisis in our country and around the world and Lord we do pray for the um, particularly for the unemployed for those who have lost their jobs because of um, uh, what's happened or they're facing the loss of their jobs. Lord God, please bless them and help them to know that you are with them and that you provide the needs of those who trust and put their faith in you. Lord God, we pray for our politicians, for our government, making such big decisions that affect so many people. May their hearts be fully turned towards you. May you bless them um, and protect them and help them to concentrate on you and your kingdom. May the choices that they make truly be your will. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for all those who are affected by natural um, disasters at the moment. We think about those affected by fires, particularly uh, in the US. Lord, we pray for those who have lost their homes and, or lost their loved ones. And we pray for those firefighters who are still trying to contain that. Lord, please will you bring about an end to those fires and please protect those who are trying to contain it. And please help those who are making decisions about how to tackle that, that particular fire um, to do so well and in a way which will bring about the swiftest, uh, swiftest end to it. Lord, we do um, also pray for the increase in um, the uh, lockdown measures that we're seeing come in this week. And we pray for those for whom that will be particularly hard. Lord, we pray for grandparents who won't be able to see their grandchildren. We pray for the grandchildren too, Lord, and, and uh, for the whole family. Lord, we pray for those for whom this is going to affect their work again. Lord, we pray for those who are already isolated and already vulnerable. Lord, they are known to you and we just lift their needs to you, knowing that you are a God of mercy and that you see. Help us to be your ears and your eyes in this. Help us to be your hands and your feet as we seek to bring about your kingdom. Lord, help us to not be afraid to speak of your gospel, of your saving love. Help us this week to speak about Jesus and the hope that is found in him when all else feels completely shaky when all else feels to be crumbling around us help us lord to speak of the firm foundation that we have found in you lord in your mercy hear our prayer and father god we pray for all those who are affected by violent crime lord it feels like a number of things have happened recently that are so worrying and um, particularly um, about young people. We pray for the communities for whom they've affected most. Um, we think of Birmingham and we think of um, down south as well, Lord. And we just pray that you will um, be with those grieving, be with those who are scared, be with those who have committed the crime. Lord, help us to be peacemakers. Help us to be um, seeking your justice in this and help us to be seeking your face in it too. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, Father, we lift to you that is all that is on our hearts and in our minds today. We lift to you those who are known to us who are struggling, those who are sick, those who are in hospital, those who are dying, and those who love them and sit with them. Lord, we lift to you the needs of all those whom we love, knowing that you love them even more than we do. Lord, be with them. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We draw all our prayers and praises together by praying together the Lord's Prayer. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. This is the moment in our service when um, we would sing our final song together. So if you'd like to go and do that now, let's worship together. Thank you so much for joining us. It's uh, just been a real privilege to worship with you this morning. I hope you're well and you're safe. I hope that you've got your eyes fixed firmly on Jesus. I hope that you know his love surrounds you today and in all the days ahead. We finish our service with a blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you and all those whom you love now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.